What if I told you most EV owners are destroying their batteries without even realizing it? Not slowly, not eventually, right now. 80%. That's the number. A number so huge, so silent, it feels like the opening scene of a techno thriller. A hidden crisis spreading under the hood of the future. Because your EV isn't a tank. It isn't a brick. It's a living chemical system. One that reacts, remembers, and degrades based on every choice you make. And while the world celebrates electric cars as invincible marvels, a quiet decay is happening behind those glossy battery packs. Heat, voltage, charge patterns. Five simple mistakes that can turn a 300,000-mile battery into a 150,000-mile regret. Picture it, a sleek electric machine glowing in your driveway, modern, flawless, futuristic, but inside, a slow motion disaster unfolding one charging session at a time, invisible, relentless, avoidable. So before you plug in again, before you lose another mile of life you can never get back, you need to know the truth. This is Drevexa where we expose the mechanics behind the machine and give you the power to master the electric age. If you want to protect your battery and your investment, hit like, smash subscribe, and step into the future with us. Now, let's reveal the five mistakes that are quietly killing your EV. Mistake number one is a psychological trap inherited from the combustion age, the obsession with the full tank. You see that battery icon and your instinct screams to fill it to 100%. It feels safe. It feels ready. But lithium-ion technology doesn't work like a gas tank. It works like a muscle. Imagine stretching a rubber band to its absolute limit and holding it there day after day. Eventually, it loses its snap. That is exactly what happens inside your battery cells. When you force a charge to a 100%, you push the lithium ions into an extreme high voltage stress. The electrolyte begins to oxidize and the cathode becomes unstable. You aren't just filling a tank, you are physically degrading the internal structure of the cell. Manufacturers know this. That's why many brands like Audi or Tesla actually hide a small buffer of unusable energy at the top and bottom of the pack, a phantom margin to save you from yourself. But even with that safety net, routinely hitting that 100% mark generates excess heat and accelerates degradation. The result? A battery that charges slower and dies faster. The fix is simple, yet counterintuitive. Stop at 80%. Think of 80% as your new full for the daily grind, commuting, school runs, the grocery store. Reserve that final 20% only for the rare cross-country road trips where every mile counts. By living in the middle, you keep the battery chemistry relaxed, cool, and durable. Then comes the second silent killer, the addiction to speed. We live in a world that hates to wait, and DC fast charging feels like magic. You pull up, plug in, and watch the rain shoot up in minutes. But this convenience demands a heavy toll. To understand why, you have to look at the flow of power. When you charge at home with AC, the car's onboard converter gently sips electricity, converting it to DC and feeding the battery at a pace it can easily digest. It's a slow, nutritious meal. DC fast charging, however, is a force feeding. It bypasses the onboard converter entirely, blasting high voltage direct current straight into the battery pack. This massive influx of energy creates significant internal resistance, which manifests as heat, the arch enemy of lithium. While modern EVs have sophisticated thermal management systems to cool the pack, they can't completely negate the stress of a supercharge. Consistently hammering your cells with this high current can lead to something called lithium plating, where metallic lithium builds up on the anode, permanently locking away capacity.
It's like developing chronic high blood pressure. You might feel fine today, but the internal damage is compounding. Treat the supercharger as an emergency tool, not a daily routine. For the longevity of your machine, slow and steady doesn't just win the race, it ensures you finish it. Mistake number three is playing Russian roulette with your home wiring. It starts with a simple thought. The cord doesn't reach. I'll just grab that orange extension cord from the garage. It works for your lawnmower. It works for your drill. Why not your car? Here is the reality check you need. Most household extension cords are built for peak loads, short bursts of power for a few minutes. But an EV? An EV is a continuous load beast. It demands maximum amperage for hours on end. When you force that much current through a thin, cheap wire, you are fighting physics. Resistance builds, heat accumulates. That extension cord doesn't just get warm, it turns into a heating element. The insulation melts, the connectors fuse, and suddenly you aren't charging your car, you are kindling a fire in your own driveway. And it gets worse outside. You might think a little rain is harmless, but water is the ultimate conductor for chaos. Unless you are using equipment with a certified IP rating, like IP65 or IP67, designed to seal out dust and high-pressure water, you are inviting corrosion and short circuits directly into your charging port. Don't improvise with electricity. If the cable isn't certified for the job, it doesn't touch the car. Then there is mistake number four, the vacation trap. You're heading out of town for a month. Your instinct tells you to charge the car to 100% so it is ready to go when you return. It feels responsible. In reality, it is destructive. Leaving a lithium-ion battery sitting at 100% is like parking a gas car with the engine redlining in neutral. The car isn't moving, but the stress is immense. This phenomenon is known as calendar aging. When the state of charge is at its peak, the voltage within the cells is effectively trying to tear the internal chemistry apart. The electrolyte begins to decompose, and the anode forms a restrictive layer that permanently blocks energy flow. You come back from your holiday, and your battery has aged a year in just a few weeks. The sweet spot for storage isn't full, and it isn't empty. It's 50%. This is the battery's zen state, where the ions are balanced and internal stress is near zero. If your car has a storage mode, use it. If not, drain it to half before you walk away. Your future self will thank you when the range is still there. Finally, we arrive at mistake number five, the cold start illusion. It's winter, the windshield is frosted, the air is biting, and you just want to get moving. You jump in, blast the heat, and hit the pedal. The car moves, but silently under the floorboards, the system is screaming. You see, an electric vehicle is not a machine of combustion. It is a machine of chemistry, and chemistry hates the cold. When temperatures drop, the liquid electrolyte inside your battery cells begins to thicken. It becomes sluggish, like trying to run through water instead of air. This increases internal impedance, resistance to flow. The lithium ions struggle to swim from the anode to the cathode. You might not feel it in the acceleration, but the car knows. To protect itself, the battery management system, BMS, drastically limits performance. The most painful loss? Regenerative braking. You lift your foot, expecting the car to slow down and recapture energy, but nothing happens. The battery is too cold to accept that sudden rush of power. Instead of recharging, you are using physical friction brakes, wasting kinetic energy as heat. It's a double penalty. You're not gaining energy, and you're burning more of it to push through that internal resistance. Then comes the phantom drain. You're demanding heat for the cabin. The battery is demanding heat for itself. Suddenly, you're fighting a war on two fronts. You might lose 20, maybe 30% of your range before you even reach the highway. It feels like the miles are just evaporating. 
but there's a cheat code. It's called preconditioning. Most modern EVs allow you to schedule your departure. If you do this while plugged into your wall box at home, magic happens. The car draws electricity from the grid, not the battery, to warm the pack and the cabin before you unplug. You step into a warm car with a warm battery, full range, and full regen capabilities. You aren't just buying comfort, you're buying efficiency. You're starting the race with a running start. These machines are the future, but they demand a new kind of driver, a driver who thinks, plans, and understands the invisible flow of energy. Don't just drive, operate. If you want to stay ahead of the curve and master the technology of tomorrow, hit that subscribe button. Join the Dravexa community. We don't just drive cars, we understand them. Tell me in the comments, which of these habits are you guilty of? Let's talk.